If you want to have a fit and healthy cactus in your home, then you should be watering him like this. Not like this, this will not get the job done. You might think giving him this amount of water will only end up killing him and this is where one of the many misconceptions lie about cactus. That we should never give them water and on the rare occasion we actually do, we should only give them a trickle. Just enough to wet the beak so to speak. But this is not the way my plant friend and to understand why we need to think about their natural habitat and the conditions they normally experience. And a quick shout out to Squarespace who have sponsored today Today's video but more on that in a bit. Now it doesn't take a genius to figure out that cacti are desert dwellers. I think we all know this. They primarily live in the arid or semi-arid regions of deserts and dry grasslands. This means they are used to going long periods without water but then get absolutely peed on when a short but intense rainfall arrives. This long period of drought means they have adapted to store water in their fleshy stems or leaves so they don't keel over and die after only a few weeks of no rainfall. This is a never watering your cactus part that I think most of us have got down pretty well. We have no trouble ignoring our cactus whatsoever. But if we never ever water our cactus then we're in big trouble. And when we do come to water him we must do so deeply. This mimics the intense rainfall they experience in the desert and ensures their reserves of water are filled up properly. Water with a little dram like this and chances are those reserves are going to get topped up and you know what that means. Cactus death and all the shame and self-loathing that that brings. I've been there, trust me. Anyway, there are two ways you can make sure you give your beloved cactus a decent drink. One is to take it over to the sink and pour water all over the soil, watching as all the excess water comes out of the drainage holes. Now don't be shy here, you can't give it too much at this point. I'd aim to give it at least one litre of water if not more. If you're worried about overwatering, then don't be my plant friend. Overwatering is much more about frequency than volume. Leave a cactus to sit in water for weeks on end and you'll have root rotting problems. The other watering approach, and this is the one I tend to use because it's super easy is to bottom water your little fella. Sounds dirty I know but it's pretty normal. I add about a third of the volume of the pot of water to the pot and sit the plant on top. I found this to be just a ticket to give my cactus a decent drink but not so much that it gets all bloated. But here's the important part. I always make sure to come back the next day and check if there is excess water still in the pot. If there is, I simply get rid. Symbols. But how do you know when it's time to actually give your cactus a drink? This is the bit that flummoxes lots of folks and it need not. The aim of the game is to let the soil dry out completely before giving it a drink. It needs to be bone dry. This is of course because the plant is storing water in the thick fleshy stems and leaves. So if you give it water too soon, you risk turning your plant into a mushy mess. But don't worry too much about that. As long as you're not giving it water every week, you should be fine. And by the way, mushy stems is one of the plant problems I cover in my Plant Problems Troubleshooting Handbook that you can download completely for free by scanning the QR code on the screen now or following the link in the description to this video. It'll get you out of a jam the next time something untoward happens with your plant like yellowing, wilting or droopiness and it's all completely for free. Check it out. Right, this is my approach to watering. Let's say I give my cactus a thorough drink at the beginning of April. I know that it's going to be fine for at least three weeks if not more. After three weeks, I probe the soil with my trusty moisture meter. If it's reading anything other than dry, I leave it another week and probe again. Once the meter shows its driest reading, I then give him a well-deserved drink. And this approach has allowed me to keep my cacti happy for a few years now. You don't have to use a moisture meter, of course, but just be sure that the soil is completely dry. But what about winter, Mr. Sheffield? Ah, yes, winter. Well, it's dead simple, actually. I don't bother watering my cacti. I live in a temperate climate with dark, damp and cold winters, so I treat this as a kind of dormancy period for them. They're not using much water because of the dark days and cooler temp so there's no need to give them a drink. If you live somewhere warmer and brighter then you may need to continue giving them water. Now the neat thing about cacti is that they will often grow these weird offshoot ball things making them look even more alien like. Did you know these are little pups that you can easily pull off and plant them into separate pots to nurture into adult cacti. This cactus was actually a gift given to me by Mrs Sheffield's aunt that she propagated from her plant. Now those babies are all grown up and expecting ready for me to continue the circle of life. Obviously doing so is a bit tricky what with all those nasty fawns ready to slice and dice me the best chance they get but I like to use some metal tongs to pry them off and plant them into little pots. 
I'll put these bad boys on. And while I'm doing that, did you know that Sheffield Made Plants has its very own website? Setting it all up using Squarespace was a cinch and Squarespace has actually sponsored this video. Initially, I was clueless about where to start with creating a website. I really had no experience, but Squarespace simplified everything with user-friendly templates and tools. Now, it not only looks fantastic, but also functions perfectly with everything I want from a website. So why not visit squarespace.com for a free trial and explore it yourself? And when you're ready to launch your very own venture, use the link in the description to grab a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or a domain. Let the creativity flow. Now I should mention that once you've pried off the offshoots of your cactus, a safe bet is to let them callus over for a few hours to prevent rotting when you pot them on. Make sure you use nice chunky soil, give it a drink and place somewhere nice and bright. You can truly call yourself a plant parent now. The key to watering success is the soil they live in. Remember, they live in dry desert regions and grow in sandy, gravelly or rocky soils that drain very quickly. This means water is not sat around their roots for long, oversaturating their fleshy stems. So stick a cactus in a heavy soil meant for the garden and you're in for a rude awakening, my plant friend. So use a well-draining potting mix. But what does that even mean? It's just a fancy term for soil that has bits and pieces like bark and perlite added to it to increase air air pockets in the mix that then allow excess water to easily drain through, mimicking the porous nature of the native soil. This means the soil mix dries out much quicker than if you just use topsoil, and this is perfect for cactus health. You can, of course, DIY a soil mix, but a safe bet would be to buy ready-made soil mixes designed specifically for the job. I use soil mixes from Cybertanica because they've got a specific mix for pretty much all plant types on their website, including succulents, and you can nab yourself a 10% discount by using my referral link in the description. Equally important to getting the watering right for your cactus is the pot it lives in. There's really no need to complicate things here. Just keep it in a plastic nursery pot with drainage holes in the bottom, particularly if you're new to cacti. Simples. To make it less ugly, of course, you could pop it into a nice decorative pot. Plastic pots with drainage holes makes bottom water impossible and allows excess water to flow out of the bottom if you choose the sink method. This makes it much harder to kill your plants with kindness. You most definitely don't want your cactus sitting in a pool of water for too long. So that's your watering nailed. Now let's talk about another common misunderstanding when it comes to cactus care, light. Cactus love sun, right? The more the merrier, you might think. I mean, they bask in it all day in the deserts of their natural habitat, and we should mimic this as much as possible, right? Uh, sort of. It is true that they need exposure to a decent amount of direct sun. We're talking at least a good six hours for optimum health for most cacti species, but you need to be careful. They also need some protection during the hottest part of the day, especially if you live somewhere with Scorchio summers, which isn't much of a problem for me here in Costa del Sheffield. So if you can filter sunlight or give him some shade during the hottest part of the day, it will prevent sunburn and overheating and you'll be plant pairing of the year. Like I say, this isn't really a problem for me. The sun rarely comes out to say hello around here, so I leave mine to sit in the sunniest spot in my home all day and they're happy as Larry. So basically, the aim of the game is six hours of direct sun, but watch out for midday sun if you live somewhere hot. By providing your cactus with the light he needs, you'll have a much better chance of him rewarding you with a bouquet of flowers. So how do you know if the light you are getting in your home is bright enough for your cacti? Well, I've got this light meter that tells me just how bright a particular spot is in my home and I found it to be very useful. I think there are apps on your phone that do the same thing but maybe less reliably but you should be able to get a steer anyway. You want light as near to 1000 foot candles as possible to mimic the bright light they need. And what do you do then if you're not able to provide yours with what he wants? Maybe you live somewhere where the sun is blocked from coming into your home for a few hours of the day. Well to get the best out of your little friend you might consider adding a grow light to the mix. Grow lights are great for any plant because you get to play God and have total control over how much light our little buddies are getting and for how long. I've got Sansi lights all over my house because they're great and I've got a link to a 15% discount in the description so check it out. That's light, water and soil covered. What about fertilizer Mr Sheffield? It's pretty simple really because cacti have adapted to survive in nutrient poor soils in their natural habitat. 
This makes things easier for us, probably. So they're used to growing in environments where nutrients are scarce and have developed nifty tools for conserving and using the limited nutrients available to them. So give them a very light feed during spring and summer and cut back entirely in the winter if your winters are cold and dark and the plant has stopped growing. It's much better to under rather than over fertilize these bad boys because you start to see issues like root burn and salt buildup in the soil. I typically give mine a feed of houseplant focus every couple of months during the summer and that's it. You might want to consider giving a cactus specific feed though to make sure everything is in order. So you've got cacti sussed out now. You now need to know how to keep succulents alive and kicking for the best cacti and succulent display including why you should never touch the leaves with your hands. So click on the video on the screen now. And subscribe for more fun. See you next time.